Nothing like realizing another year is rounding up, and well, let's just say what we're all thinking. Why haven't we gotten a new Friday the 13th film yet? And f*** off with that, and there's a new TV series on the way, nonsense. Could we just get Jason in the snow before I die of old age? Passionate rant aside, it did end up being another solid year for the horror genre, and we folks over at Joe Blow Horror Originals wanted to do things a bit differently this year and look back at the moments that we found to be the most memorable. To discuss the series of events that left fans both exhilarated and unsettled, from industry strikes to iconic comebacks and unexpected controversies. The year was a roller coaster ride for horror enthusiasts, and you know what? Definitely worth looking back on. So, before the clock strikes 12 and the Earth becomes a year older, let's delve into the most memorable moments that define the horror landscape in 2023. Ah! Number 6. 80s Horror Memories – Joe Blow's Ambitious Project In a personal milestone for horror fans, Joe Blow Horror Originals – you know, it's a movie page run by movie fans – embarked on its most ambitious project yet – 80s Horror Memories. It's a series with the primary focus of paying homage to the nostalgic allure of 80s horror and our personal connection to it. This expansive endeavor, lasting all 10 years of the decade, serves as a journey back in time, celebrating the classics that shaped the genre and the fans who grew up in it. Here we aim to preserve and honor the legacy of 80s horror and show how it resonated with fans us, and the culture. Hell, Joe Blow Horror Originals itself fosters a sense of community and shared appreciation for the genre's roots. We love horror, talk about horror, and have a great respect for producing horror content. This project became not just a celebration of the past, but also a testament to the enduring influence of 80s horror on the community and its fans. 5. Best Buy Abandons Physical Media – A Blow to Horror Collectors a seismic shift occurred for horror fans with the disheartening news that Best Buy would no longer sell physical media. F**k. The word collectively heard around the world. For many, Best Buy was not merely a retail outlet. Though, let's be honest, even that wasn't something they were excelling in. Not in this day and age, anyway. No, it was a haven for physical media. The Steelbox exclusives alone were 99% of the reason that Best Buy was even part of my existence. But, as often in life, times had changed. The removal of DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4K movies will mark the end of an era, leaving collectors and enthusiasts grappling with the proverbial death of a giant. The impact of Best Buy's decision rippled through the horror community, forcing fans to adapt to a changing landscape. <laughs> of course, we have great boutique labels like Second Sight, Arrow, and Shout Factory, just to name a few. But seeing Best Buy close the door on physical media was a brutal and honest life moment. Nothing lasts forever, friends. The departure of Best Buy from the physical media landscape underscored the evolving nature of horror consumption in the digital age. Remember, when you stream or even buy digital, you never own. You're just renting the idea of having something that you love. It's never truly yours. And here we are, left to navigate an increasingly virtual realm when all of us collectors just want the damn movie sitting neatly on our shelves. Come on! Number 4. Saw X – Breaking New Ground The Saw franchise returned triumphantly with Saw X, a pretty big feat considering that spiral from the book of Saw, you know, from the talents of Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson, was literally meant to restart the series and bring it into a new era. But it sputtered at the box office, got mediocre reviews, and is widely considered the worst film in the franchise. Yes, oversaw 3D. So it really wasn't the return to form that we had all hoped for. But Saw X was different. It surprised audiences and critics alike. Tobin Bell returned, and boy did he come out swinging, giving a heartfelt and outstanding performance. Coupled with a well-received storyline, which elevated the film beyond the typical expectations that the later sequels had set, Saw X was what Spiral had hoped to be, a fan favorite. Breaking away from the perceived schlock of its predecessors, Saw X demonstrated that the franchise could evolve without compromising on quality. It marked a turning point, 
proving that even long-running franchises could still deliver fresh and compelling content. This revitalization of Saw not only pleased longtime fans, but also attracted a new audience, redefining the franchise's place in contemporary horror. And as things should be, we can expect another Saw in the fall. All is right with the world. Number 3. Scream 6, Scream 7 Fallout – Behind the Scenes Chaos With Scream 5 being a return to form, though 4 is far better than most would like to admit, Radio Silence came in and reinvigorated the franchise, putting it back as a franchise juggernaut. Scream 6 continued with commercial success and critical acclaim, but a storm was brewing behind the scenes. After finding massive success with Netflix's Wednesday, Jenna Ortega was demanding of a higher pay and created a bit of a standoff with Screen Gems, showcasing the challenges of aligning financial interests within the film industry. Hell, they went through the same thing with Nev Campbell, not wanting to pay her her worth. It might come as a great surprise, but Spyglass Media Group, an LLC, gets cheap when it comes to talent, not coded as a CEO. But the bigger story is that of Melissa Barrera's statements on the Israel-Palestine conflict. We're not ones to get into politics, so that's all we will say, but because of said post, Melissa was let go from the series. The fallout demonstrated the challenges of politics and social media in horror cinema, the state of political expression, and the major change that Scream would now need to go through. As Part 7 seemed to be closing out the Carpenter saga, I guess now it's time to pay Nev Campbell her bag. Number 2. Ellen Burstyn and Linda Blair's Return in The Exorcist Believer The Exorcist Believer may have received some harsh brunt, though hey, I actually make a pretty strong case in favor of it, so maybe listen to that if you have a chance. But it undeniably made headlines with two legendary actresses, Ellen Burstyn and Linda Blair, returning to their iconic roles. On a side note, we should give some love and acknowledgement to the fantastic director of the original, whom we lost earlier in 2023, the hilarious and forever cool Mr. William Friedkin. I don't give a flying fuck into a rolling donut about what Al Pacino thinks. You will be missed, sir. As each year goes by, we need to appreciate the legends that we have left. And whether you liked or hated The Exorcist Believer, it was still interesting to see both of these titans of the 70s back in this world. While the film itself may not have lived up to the lofty expectations set by its predecessor, you know, the original, not the sequels, the triumphant return of Burstyn and Blair added a layer of nostalgia and reverence for the genre, reminding audiences of the lasting impact of horror and why we still talk about The Exorcist all these years later. Number 1. The SAG Strikes Indie Horror's Resilience The echoes of the Screen Actors Guild and Writers Guild strikes have reverberated through the film industry, causing disruptions in all major studio productions. And just to be clear, good. The time had definitely come to shift the paradigm and start paying people fairly and Hollywood accounting be damned. For once, the good guy got a win. What the fuck is this? However, amidst the chaos, indie horror emerged as a beacon of resilience. While bigger studios were dragging their Gucci shoes and sitting on their yachts, the strikes inadvertently highlighted the skill and ferocity of independent horror filmmakers, and who, unburdened by the constraints of the studio system bullshit, showcased their ability to adapt swiftly. Why? Because they could agree to the fair demands set by the union. And as horror always does, they saved the day. A prime example was A24, a studio that navigated the strikes seamlessly, agreeing to terms promptly and resuming filming without missing a beat. This is a fine example of the genre's capacity for creativity, even in the face of adversity while also emphasizing that horror could not only survive, but thrive beyond the conventional studio structures. Big surprise, but horror won. And that brings this to a close, my friends. We survived another year, saw some fantastic stories, and lived to tell the tale. The horror genre continued to impress, evolve, and surprise, as it always has. 
So can we just agree to end the constant articles that seem surprised when a horror movie does well? I'm pretty sure the verdict is in. Horror fucking rules. You see, the genre is the backbone and the foundation of the film industry, as it has stood for many years and will stand for many more. As we bid farewell to 2023, let us grab a drink and raise it high. All of us over at Joe Blow Horror Originals wish you a safe, healthy, and happy new year. Remember, we never do this alone. No, we walk together. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's been a thrill, so sayonara.